But it's not a question of uh, the unhappiness of the one with the other, namely of Obama with Netanyahu or Netanyahu with Obama. The question is uh, the existence of the State of Israel, the security of the State of Israel. And there is no question that Iran is uh, after the, the uh, creation of uh, an atom, atom bomb, one or two, and it is uh, after creating an atom bomb easily, can, that can easily be achieved um, with uh, the enrichment of uranium. That's the easiest way of creating an atom bomb. There is no question about that, that once, once the agreement is, is, uh, is reached, uh, Iran will not keep it. Iran will not keep it, even if, I mean, even the agreement as it is, which is basically uh, in favor, in many ways, of Iran, favors Iran, um, uh, even this one will not be kept. Uh, bit by bit, the Iranians will, uh, will, will, uh, uh, will, will change it, will, uh, will uh, do things which um, would not be seen very quickly that they are doing in order to uh, to negate the agreement to abolish it. But at the end of the story, the Iranians are the masters, and not the Americans, and not anybody else. Besides the fact that uh, Europe is not behind the Americans, Europe is waiting for the moment to make business with Iran. So it's not a question of of Netanyahu and and uh, and Obama. On the other hand, uh, Mr. Obama. The, the President of the United States has put all his prestige on the scale, so he cannot he cannot back back up, and uh, and he would like to reach reach an agreement, um, also because in many ways he feels himself that he brings peace to the world, having achieved uh, the Peace Nobel Prize before he did anything. So here it's an, an opportunity for him to show that instead of going to war, he is going, he is going to peace. Instead of fighting, he is coming to agreements. So there are there are a personal sides to it, but the most important thing is the danger, uh, the danger of the possibility of the great possibility that Iran could achieve an atomic power. Uh, for uh, for military use, and uh, this is the first and foremost a danger to the state of Israel to its existence. So it's not a mere coincidence that the prime minister is so adamant to to do anything possible in order to stop this agreement, which he will not succeed to do. It's clear that. If the question is the President of the United States and his prestige, and uh, and uh, be, uh, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, the President of the United States, comes first as far as the Americans are concerned, and if if just by chance uh, the veto of the veto of the, um, the, the the President will be overridden, uh, namely that it, he will not be able to keep. To keep the to keep the veto because of the interference of the Congress and the Senate, um, it's it's very very clear that uh, this means humiliation to him and to the United States, and many people in Europe are just waiting for it. Professor Sharon, you're talking a lot of the dangers of this deal. How is it possible that Israel is the only country that protest? against this deal? Because the other, the other countries are interested in business, mostly in business. They are interested at the time, they are wait, they're waiting for the time in which they will be able to, um, to resume um, the economic relations with Iran, which is a big state, and basically, basically could, could, could afford to the Europeans, mainly to the Europeans, Good markets and uh, other things which uh, economically are beneficial to the Europeans, and why not? But it seems like that the majority in the Jewish community in the United States support this deal. Well, because the majority of the Jews in the United States, I don't know what is the majority of the Jews, I don't know what the situation today. 
but the Jews who are outspoken about it are uh, uh, are the defenders of the president. They love the president. They are the people who are in many ways responsible for his re-election. So uh, it's one one should not be surprised that Jews that are mostly liberal and and Democrats uh, are behind the president. If they are behind the president, they are behind the deal. Particularly, you should remember, not everybody read the agreement. Not everybody knows the agreement. I mean, they hear what the president has to say. The president says it's a good agreement, so it's a good agreement. The prime minister of Israel says it's a bad agreement. He's being ridiculed for saying that's a bad agreement. It is really, he was being ridiculed no less than by the mouth of the president of the United himself, himself United States himself. So uh, here, you, here you have the one, one person representing the state of Israel fighting. And of course, on the other hand, the president of the United States says to him basically openly that he doesn't know what he's talking about. So. And uh, if you ask the liberal Jews in America, what do they think? They'll say to us, we believe our president. We don't, we do, if our president says that uh, today, today it's, it's a sunny day, it's today it's a sunny day, that's it. What's your advice today to Prime Minister Netanyahu? I don't have to give him any advice. Mr. Netanyahu knows the United States. He had many hours of studying the President of the United States. He know he has got information about the Iranians more more than anybody else. If he says that the Iranian the Iranians strive to get atom an, an atom atom bomb is a, a real one and it is it is it is a dangerous one you've got one must believe him. And let's hope that he will know what to do with the help of people that are professionals on the subject. Professor Moshe Shawani, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much.